morning to all of our New Calvary Baptist Church family and partners. We are so grateful that you have decided to worship with us on today in spirit and in truth. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and let us exalt his name together. We are so grateful for you partnering with us and sharing with us as we worship God in spirit and in truth. Here it is, New Calvary. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray our prayer of invocation. All wise and eternal creator, Abba, Father, Daddy, Mother God, we come before you this morning, oh God, just to say thank you and to say that you're welcome in this space. You're welcome in our hearts. You're welcome in our minds. Have your way in this worship experience that we will have an intimate encounter with you, and we will not leave this space like we came, but we're going to leave excited to run on to see what the end is going to be. It is in the marvelous, the magnificent, and the miracle-working name of Jesus Christ, our healer, our redeemer, our helper, and our friend that we pray. All of God's children said amen, amen, and amen. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth on today.
God rejoice. Truly we rejoice because our God reigns. Truly we give God glory, praise, and honor. For God is indeed worthy to be praised. We come together giving God glory for all that the Lord has done. All you need to do is take a look back over your life and see what the Lord has done and declare that God's goodness continues to sustain, feed, and fulfill all of our hearts, our dreams, and our minds. We are delighted to be in worship with you today. We are delighted to share in this moment and declare the goodness of the Lord in all of our lives for we rejoice and are glad in the fact that our God reigns. We've declared already how good God is. We've declared already that God is a way maker. We've declared already that God is a sustainer. We've declared already and seen it for ourselves that God is a way maker out of no way. So we come together this morning to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth because we declare that the Lord is worthy to be praised. Our God reigns and we are indeed glad about it on this morning. We welcome you to the 11 o'clock worship hour of the New Calvary Baptist Church to all of our family, to all of our friends. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord, so good to share with you on this morning and we are grateful for this time together. We want you to know how delighted we are for you to in uh, to this virtual worship experience and we hope and pray that something is done or said that feeds your soul, empowers you and encourages you to run on just a little while longer. If you are indeed looking for a church home, you're looking to fellowship uh, somewhere, looking to grow, no matter where you are, no matter what your location, we are accessing you and you are accessing us so that we might continue to share in the spirit of the Lord together that no, wherever you are, we still believe that all roads lead to new Calvary. How grateful we are to share with you in this moment. We're just going to share just a few announcements for you on this day. We're grateful to share on this first Sunday of March. The song says time is filled with swift transition and for some it's not as fast as we'd like it to be, but we still believe that God is faithful. And so we want to just share just a few things with with you this morning as we continue to move forward in this worship experience. We want you to know that uh, your financial statements for 2020 are available. So if you are interested in acquiring those, your financial contributions, you they are made upon request. So you can pick them up. You can do that via email or you can do that through snail mail. Send that through the United States uh, Postal Service. But with all that's going on in the Postal Service, there's no telling when you're going to get that. But but you can request it in that way. So you can request it through the mail, email, or you can come and pick that up. So please contact the church office during its office hours and they will accommodate you. We are continuing to look for those who are volunteers uh, as we continue to expand. Uh, we are grateful that God has blessed us in this venue. We're grateful that God continues to grant us even increase as we worship virtually. We're thankful for that and you need to know New Calvary that as we expand virtually and as we we expand in this ministry. It is something that has gained momentum and it is something that we realize um, that will remain and will stay uh, in the world, in the video world and in the media world that we live in. It is something that will be a staple with us. And so those of you who may be interested in sharing in uh, New Calvary's audio vid visual ministry, we um, invite you and encourage you if you are familiar um, with media, if you are familiar with audio and tech, uh, tech uh, information in terms of audio, all of those things, or if you just desire to learn, if you have an earnest desire to learn it, we want you to be a part of that uh, and share in that venue so you can call the church office and let us know. You can put that uh, in the comment section. You can reach out uh, through uh, our number and just in, in let us know, and we will schedule and put that together so that we can get 
training done. We need individuals, uh, faithful individuals of the church who are interested in sharing in our virtual world. And so we are indeed uh, making that employ for those who so desire to share in that way. Uh, our Helping Hands ministry is continuing to move our grief support ministry that you see that information for you on the screen uh, is having a Zoom training session that is going to take place Monday, March 8th uh, at 7 p.m. So if you have a calling or if you have a purpose uh, to serve those who are in places of grief, places of loss, and trying to help people uh, restore themselves to uh, function and to operate and to continue to just work through uh, their grieving situations, um, Please contact the church office uh, and speak with Reverend Harris during the regular church operation hours. Uh, that uh, Zoom ID, that Zoom meeting ID for the Helping Hands Ministry is uh, 816-7892. 8. That again, the meeting ID is 816-7892-5048. And the passcode is all capital letters N C B C H E L P. Again, I'm gonna give that to you. The passcode is N C B C H E L P. N C B C Help all capital letters uh, for that Zoom. So if you are interested, please sign on and be a part. Uh, we continue to share in our virtual school if you are interested in being a part of our virtual learning for our church school, um, and please make sure that you reach out to the church by Friday at 2 p.m. to let folks know that you are interested. I am told that there's some interesting dialogue and some very interesting learning and growth that is taking place, and we are excited that we are still spiritually growing in the Word of God, even virtually as we practice this social distancing. So we invite you all to share in that. So please sign up and participate. That takes place from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, before the worship hour uh, in on Sundays, so please make sure that you sign on. Uh, we are excited about celebrating of the women's ministry of New Calvary Baptist Church. We are grateful for all that is taking place uh, in our women's ministry. And at the end of the month on March the 28th, that Sunday, there will be a celebration. Uh, we have uh, in line a guest celebrant that will be a blessing to the New Calvary Church, but that will be women's weekend, that will be virtual. And so we will continue to let you know there's gonna be a, a whole bunch of things that are gonna take place on that weekend. And so the women continue to generate their momentum uh, as they share in all that is taking place. And so we want you to sign up, be aware, and sign on as soon as we give you that information, with, which will be soon when everything gets solidified. And so we are looking for the women of New Calvary uh, to be engaged and to share in that process. We are grateful for uh, your continued giving and your continued faithfulness and fellowship as you share. We want you to make sure that you are still being faithful in your tithe and your offering, and you can uh, send that to the church, 800 East Virginia Beach Boulevard, here in the city of Norfolk, 23504. Uh, you can go on Givelify and make New Calvary one of your favorite places to give, or you can simply drop that by uh, and don't have to put that in the mail. You can drop that off uh, in your your routine and in the order of your day. But however you do it, we understand that the more you give, the more God gives to you and God understands uh, and appreciates the faithfulness uh, to God's church as we continue to do the work and the labor that continue to uh, promote uh, God's glory, God's work, and God's purpose and God's justice in this space. We uh, want you to make sure that you like and subscribe to all uh, of our social media platforms as we continue to do the work on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube. We continue and invite you to sign on to New Calvary Norfolk VA as we continue to grow and share with one another. Uh, please be mindful and reminded that our office hours as we continue to share are from 9 a.m. Uh, to 2 p.m. Tuesday through Friday uh, throughout the week, and we want you to make sure that all business is done uh, in those hours, and so please we make that available to you. We are delighted, New Calvary, that God continues to bring us a little water 
each and every week, and people are continuing uh, to appreciate the words that we share and the worship that we offer in this space. And as we have uh, continued to share, we are grateful to welcome our newest member, Sister Sharon Long, uh, Sharon Lang, Sharon Lang, Sister Sharon Lang, uh, who shares with us uh, via Facebook Live. She has uh, signed up to be a member of New Calvary Baptist Church, and we are peacock proud and hippopotamus happy uh, to share with her and continue to grow as we talk about being a church that is progressive and that uh, is innovative and looking forward to move and uh, be aggressive in our campaign for Christ. And so we understand that the spirit makes the difference and we continue to be empowered and transformed in this place. We want to take also this time to share uh, those who are sharing in birthdays and anniversaries uh, in the month of March. All of you March babies, uh, we are delighted and want you to share. So please put in the comment section if you were sharing birthday in the month of March as we share together. And we're going to sing happy birthday to all of our March baby members. All of you who are celebrating wedding anniversaries, who got married in the month of March, please, you can put that uh, in uh, the comment section. And we hope that God continues to bless your union as you grow together in love and in spirit. I want to spend a, send a special shout out to Lady Cassandra Small, Lady C, who is celebrating her birthday on March the 8th. Uh, tomorrow, we are grateful uh, for her and all that God is doing with her, and grateful for uh, uh, all of her work and her ministry, and she is indeed a behind-the-scenes individual, and so we are grateful for all that she continues to do. Uh, let me just remind you that those who are interested in being members of the New Calvary family, uh, you can call 757-828-6121. Uh, Six one two one, and you will be immediately contacted with someone uh, virtually, a uh, virtual minister, or someone who will get your information uh, to make sure that you go through the proper process of being a member of the New Calvary family. We look forward to moving in a word of prayer in this time as we continue to move forward in this worship experience how grateful we are to just share together. But there are those, and we share uh, in several different. Uh, um, modes right now. There's a lot of different things that are taking place. We uh, continue to pray for the Delk family as um, Sister Layla Banks has gone home to be with the Lord just this week. Uh, this past week on Thursday we celebrated her life. Uh, we uh, regret to announce that Sister Emma Tyree, a uh, long-standing member and faithful and wonderful spirit here at the New Calvary Baptist Church has gone home to be with the Lord and we continue to pray uh, for all of the members and new Calvary who have solicited and asked and petitioned your prayers as a church family and we lift them up at this time. We pray for Sister Serena Noel Thomas uh, who is at Chesapeake Regional Hospital. We pray for Sister Brenda Morris. We pray for Sister Leonthea Miller. We pray for Sister Patricia Ganey. We are praying for Sister LaBarbara Willis and praying for Sister, uh, Sister uh, Darlene and Brother Wayne Baxter. We continue to pray for the Turners, Sister Dolores and Brother Joe. We pray for us, uh, the Littles, uh, Sister Willie May and Brother George. At this time, we pray for Brother Willie Turner. Pray for Brother Harold Brown. We pray for Sister Cynthia Hanna, and we pray for the entire Allen family. We continue to just lift up all prayers and concerns at this time. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, we ask that you would bow with us and share with us as we invoke the Lord's presence uh, in a word of prayer. For we understand that there is is power in prayer that when the people of God come together and pray together change does indeed happen so if you will just bow and pray with me in a moment as we reflect on the, in the Lord's presence for God how we love you and thank you 
how grateful we are, God, for this time, this opportunity, this day that you have made. We're grateful, God, for the presence that you have blessed us with. Grateful, God, for all that you have done. Grateful, God, for the opportunity to simply wake up this morning that you have started us on our way and moved us and uh, given us a reasonable portion of health and strength and clothed us in our right minds. God, how grateful we are. For all it takes is a moment to look back over our lives and think about the blessings that you've poured upon us. God, we're grateful for this time in which we can worship together, grateful for the time when we can simply acknowledge you as God all by yourself. So God, we ask that you would have your way in this worship experience, have your way and speak to our hearts and our minds. Minister to us, God that the atmosphere might be set, that the presence might be felt, that wherever we are, whatever device that we are using, whatever mode that we are operating to experience this worship, that through it all, the Holy Spirit would still permeate that the Spirit would still speak to our hearts, that we might be filled, God, that we might be encouraged, that, God, you might just continue to lead us and direct us in the path that we have to go. God, we pray for the new Calvary family members who have uh, solicited your prayers, who have requested that we call their names. We call on you, God, right now to simply touch them and wrap your loving arms around them and touch them with your finger of love. We pray, God, for our friends of New Calvary. Pray for those who are watching and witnessing this worship experience. God, that whoever under the sound of my voice needs to your spirit to step in and your presence to make ways out of no way. We ask God, have your way in the name of Jesus. For God, we're asking you right now to bless this nation. We're asking you, God, to bless its leaders. We're asking you, God, to bless and work through the division of this country. Bless through God the ignorance that we might move to a place of light, that we might understand our true purpose, that we might understand that as children of justice, you've called us to be better, you've called us to be brighter, you've called us, God, to declare what thus saith the Lord. So continue to empower us, lead us, and direct us, O oh God, that in all things we might give your name praise, honor, and glory. We pray, God, for those of the New Calvary family who need it, and although we can extend a physical touch in this moment, we believe, God, and we touch and agree that, God, you are still working things out. So touch them, God, in a mighty way. Whoever is sick, we ask that you would grant healing. Whoever is distressed, we ask, God, that you would grant peace. Whoever seems to have lost their way, we ask, God, that you might give them direction because you're a God that still shows up. You're a God that still makes ways. You're a God that still provides. You're a God that still uh, does exceedingly above or more than we can ask and think. So God, we thank you for this time for worship. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for giving us our direction. And in all things, Lord, we give your name the praise. We give your name the honor and we give your name the glory. For it is in the majestic and wonderful name, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we pray, God, give us the strength to keep on moving. Give us the strength to stand tall. Give us the strength to declare that thou art the Christ. And there's still power in your name. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue might confess that you indeed are Lord. We thank you for it all, God, and we bless you, and we give you glory in the wonderful, marvelous, and matchless name of Jesus, that the people of God who love God might declare and decree and say amen, amen, and amen. Come on, put your likes up, put your thumbs up, that you might receive this awesome choir who blesses us as they continue to usher the spirit of worship in this place.
Hallelujah. It gives me strength from day to day, and it will never lose its power. Hallelujah. Come on, won't you put your hearts and likes and thumbs up for this choir blessing us on this morning. Hallelujah. God, how grateful we are for worship this morning. How we thank you today for allowing us to experience one more time another first Sunday that we might worship together, that we might share and just be reminded that your blood gives us strength from day to day and it never loses its power. So minister to us right now. Speak to us through the preached word that we might be fed, we might be encouraged, we might be reminded that you're still God all by yourself. Call upon your power, call upon your presence. Ask you to speak to our hearts, God, because we are believing that you're still showing up. So have your way as only you can. And God, in all things, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Bless this, your instrument. And we ask that you would use this instrument to play your music of grace and mercy. That I might decrease as thou increases, and these people might see less of me and more of thee. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of thy grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and let my will be lost in thine. It is in the wonderful, marvelous, and matchless name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say, Amen. 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 How grateful we are to have the atmosphere of worship set and established. Amen. By this awesome musical aggregation. Amen. I call your attention to uh, the book of Acts in the 11th chapter. The book of Acts in the 11th chapter, beginning at verse 19. Acts chapter 11, verse 19. 19. We're going to read through verse 26. Acts chapter 11, verse 19 through 26. And it says and translated the new, in New International Version with these words. Now, those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. And some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they set Barnabas in Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Uh, he was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. That's the text. I want to lift up that verse 26. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. I want to talk for a while as the Lord gives us utterance and opportunity from this thought. Simply, beloved, a new beginning. A new beginning. For those of you in the era of television when it was a little bit different, many of you remember PBS was overdosing 
on Sesame Street and the Electric Company. Uh, and I don't remember which show it was, but they had a skit that said, three of these kids belong together. Three of these kids are kind of the same. But one of these kids is doing his own thing. Now it's time to play our game. Which of these kids is doing his own thing? Come on now, can you tell me which one? Can you guess which kid is doing his own thing before my song is done, before my song is done? And there would be four kids on the screen, and three of them would be doing the same thing, like playing baseball or jumping rope. But the fourth kid will be doing something else, maybe reading a book or playing a different sport. And the purpose of the song and the exercise is to not only pay attention, but to recognize the difference. Things can be similar, but it doesn't mean that they do the same thing. Exercise may be the activity, but your jogging and my Pilates class are different ways of exercising. Cleaning up might be the activity, but mopping the floor and washing dishes are different ways of cleaning up. Just because the activity may be similar doesn't mean it's being demonstrated in the same way. I share this with you because as we come to this final installment of this sermon series, The Miseducation of the Black Church, I got to thinking that we cannot stop talking about miseducation without talking about the church itself. The church has been, is a place of pillar of strength for the African American experience, an empowering agent for community. The church, as it is known, has many things in common with other churches, but the black church at its core is unique. The black church shares some universal truths, but it is particular in many ways. In other words, just like the song, the black church at its best does its own thing. Not in a separatist kind of a way, but in a way that speaks to the particulars of the African American experience. The church in our community wasn't just the Sunday morning worship place. The church held community meetings, helped to nurture an inspiration of civil rights and civil protest. The church was the place where not only grandmama was buried, but it was this place where seeds of hope were planted. The black church sent people to school and gave people a place to save their money with credit unions. The church started colleges and universities like Russ College and Dillard and Barbara Scotia and St. Paul's College and Fisk. The black church nurtured minds and believed that dreams could be accomplished. You just didn't go to church to hear the preached word. You went to church to also hear the pastor talk about what he heard in the town meeting the night before because he was the only black person that they would let in. The church is where your teacher in school uh, during the week was on Sunday morning. The church was the place where Adam Powell Jr. learned to keep the faith, where Jesse Jackson realized that he was somebody where Martin learned to dream and Fannie Lou Hamer got the courage to say that she was sick and tired. The black church nur nurtured Katherine Johnson and Ida B. Wells. The black church taught Aretha, Fantasia, Anita Baker, Luther Vandross, Ella Fitzgerald, Jennifer Holliday, Jennifer Hudson, Yolanda Adams, Patti LaBelle, and the DeBarge family, Keith Washington, Will Downing, and Grace Jones, whose father was a preacher, how to sing. The black church was the bank, it was the grocery store, it was the babysitting service, it was the community hotline, it was the liberation network wrapped all into one. Uh, the black church may have looked kind of the same, but it was doing its own thing. And as we look at the black church and what it has been, uh, and prayerfully what it still strives to be, we cannot dismiss the fact that it came from unique circumstances. The Christian church has been in the discussion since the beginning of the faith, it, it, since its origins and on the continent of Africa. Uh, we've already established that. But the black church in America came from something unique. It came from a different set of circumstances and a different set of situations. 
that forced us to see and create something different with this gospel that we've been given on these shores. In fact, the intention of the enslavers that had in sharing this gospel turned out to be nothing like they imagined it would be. In fact, in many ways, the black church is a new beginning for the Christian faith. It's a new way of looking at what God could do. It, it was an exclamation point on the power of God in any situation. A black church has shown the world what faith in action can do. And there are many things that we share in the faith uh, with people of different backgrounds. But the black church was the movement and the moment that gave Christianity a new beginning. So journey with me in the text and see as we uh, journey real quick and understand that sometimes in new beginnings you will be forced to have to regroup. That's just what's that happens in New Beginning. Sometimes you just got to regroup. The people who have followed Jesus in this text are sharing and trying to get others to understand the significance of the one who was called Jesus and who has been crucified. In fact, in this book, it is in this book that Peter, in this moment, in this very moment, has been ordained from follower to evangelist and after the demonstration of the Spirit of God and falls on people where tongues of fire, he begins to preach the good news to many who hear him and thousands give their lives to serve and follow Jesus as believers. People are not only coming together, but people are being changed. Lives are being touched in new ways and community is being formed as a result of the fellowship. So what happens in this moment that the Sanhedrin tried to stop the execution of Jesus? He has simply helped to spread his name in popularity even more. What the Sanhedrin have tried to stop has only increased the movement. Um, so they only work harder to destroy the, mov the movement at this point. I said it a few weeks ago in Bible study, that, and I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to keep on saying that this faith has always been a countercultural movement. For many different reasons, people have used Christianity as a tool to create assimilation in many different phases, but at the risk of making you nervous this morning, Jesus is revolutionary. His teaching was radical. His entourage was rambunctious. His lessons were full of resistance to the empire, and his message was revealing to what a true meaning of what it meant to be connected to the living God meant. This movement was always countercultural. The writer of Peter's letter said that we are peculiar people, meaning that we don't do this uh, the way the establishment does it. We do what God gives us a spirit to do. But with this revolutionary movement, it has brought its share of enemies. It has brought its share of challenges and casualties, and Stephen is one of them. Stephen is a believer and one who is living for the cause of Jesus, and he has been stoned for it. In fact, look at the uh, entire first part of Acts when you get a chance. Stephen, before his destruction, shares a faith testimony about what God has done and will continue to do despite the enemy's actions. So when Stephen is stoned, and like we said, stoning was a Jewish execution, Romans crucified. Uh, out of the text this morning, our text says that the believers started to scatter. That they went different places due to the prosecution and persecution they were experiencing. Believers were under attack for following the teaching of Jesus. And they left. They were literally on the run. And they ran to places like the Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, telling the message only to people of the Jewish faith. That's how it started. But the text says that some of the men from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and they began speaking to the Greeks also. Now understand a few things and we'll move on. Now when the writer says Greeks, he's speaking of non-Jews, the Gentiles, people who are not of Jewish faith, people who live in Hellenistic culture. Now understand how big this is. Jews did not witness or evangelize. They only talked faith with other Jews. But this faith isn't really Jewish. It starts with Jewish roots, um, but the tree starts to flourish into something much bigger. 
And it happened because the original group was spread out because of its persecution. Some of y'all missed it. Stephen is killed for being a follower of Jesus. It's not safe to declare your allegiance to Jesus as Lord. And so the other followers are forced to take off and to go into different places for safety. And in those places, they begin to witness to others about their connection to Jesus. Some of y'all still ain't feeling it. The idea was there. But the situation was not ideal, so things had to shift. Things are not fair, and the fear is in the people's hearts, but there is still a movement of God that is taking place. Can I help some of y'all? Too often we look at moments that are scary or moments that seem like setback and defeat. But can I suggest to you that what God might be saying to you is that it's not time to quit. It's time for you to regroup. Stop looking at moments in your life that don't work the way you planned them or the way you thought they would work as moments of defeat. You don't even have to look at them as being defeated moments. Look at them as opportunities for you to regroup. You may have to take more than a step backward. You might have to reorganize. You might have to rethink. You might have to take a minute to look at what did not work before, but always look at the opportunity to regroup so that you can do what God has been calling you to do. Some of y'all still ain't getting it. African people were no strangers to Christianity. Uh, they were no strangers to worship. We didn't come here empty or void of a spiritual center, but slave ships changed the location. Plantations changed the context. Overseers and owners shifted our situation. So we had to regroup. We had to make adjustments. We had to reintroduce ourselves to Jesus in another place, in another way, in another context. And it forced us to regroup. And we've been a regrouping people ever since. When they wouldn't let us be free and try to obtain our freedom, we had to regroup and escape on our own. When they wouldn't let us worship, we had to regroup and went into the woods and the hush harbors and do it on our own. When they wouldn't let us sing our own songs, we had to regroup and go to the ring shout. When Jim Crow showed up, we had to regroup and organize ourselves. When voting laws were being upheld to restrict us from voting, we had to regroup and protest. When they wouldn't let us into school, we had to regroup and start Tuskegee and Virginia Union and Morehouse and Claflin College. College. When they wouldn't let us work, we had to regroup and start our own businesses. When they wouldn't let us walk on Broadway, we had to regroup and walk up and down 125th Street. When they take our lives and abuse us and our rights even today, we had to regroup and shout that black lives matter. We've always been a people that knows how to regroup. Don't miss this. The believers are scattered because they're stuff of the stuff they're going through. But they still grow. Even though they're scattered, they still grow. They still tell people about Jesus. Their mission still goes forward. And if we're going to survive in the black church, here's the miseducation part. We're going to have to be willing to regroup. We're going to have to be careful that we don't do too much digging in you know, digging our heels in, I shall not be moved. We got to be careful. I know that for some of us it seems like digging in our heels is what we're supposed to do and hold our ground. But the problem with digging in is if you dig too much, eventually you're going to have to dig yourself out. If you want to grow, then you're going to have to regroup. And regrouping doesn't mean you're defeated. It means you do it right. You're preparing yourself for your growth because they don't stop doing the work. Even though they're scattered, they don't stop doing the work. Even though they're scattered, they don't stop it. They keep on doing the work because they keep believing. And the reason that we're here right now, beloved, is because somebody kept on believing. The reason we're here is because somebody still believed. Somebody kept believing and we were willing to regroup because somebody was trying to make a difference and make a change. And if you want to keep growing, then you have to be willing to take a step back and take another look at what's happening and look at what God wants you to do. And you can keep growing, but you got to be willing to regroup. I wonder. 
looking for a few of y'all can just get honest with me and say there's some places in my life where I had to step back and reorganize that thing and regroup and find out what steps God wanted me to take and when I stepped with regrouping I realized I stepped further than I did by myself. You need to know that regrouping can help you get to the places that God has you to go. In new beginnings, sometimes it means you're going to have to regroup. But the second thing is, in new beginnings, sometimes it means we're going to have to rebuild. Here it is. Believers are taken off track. They were on the run. They were shifted from their original plan because danger presented itself. And so they had to regroup. They went to Cyprus. They went to Cyrene. They went to Phoenicia. And they went to Antioch. Antioch. Now, this is important because we've already talked about where Cyrene was. We know that Cyrene is modern-day Libya, and Antioch is in the same region. In fact, it was looked at as Syrian Antioch. Why is this important? Antioch is in the northern region of Africa. Uh, so we're talking about a black city with black people, uh, with black culture. See, some of y'all said I thought this was over. I don't need no month. I'm African 24-7, 365. Antioch is a metropolitan hub of civilization. Outside of uh, Alexandria and Corinth, it is one of the largest populations in the region. And some of the believers had gone there and they start teaching about Jesus. Now the text says, uh, they just didn't speak to the Jews, but they spoke to the Gentile citizens as well. Greeks, in the text says, which means because they were more in a more metropolitan area, there were more diverse people there. And they began to share with them about Jesus. And the number of believers grew. I'm in the text. Look at verse 21. The Lord was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. You missed it. They didn't just share with the Jewish people, but they began to share with those who were Gentile, those who were not like them. They shared with people who had different faith structures, shared with people who had different beliefs. They shared with people who grew up differently, shared with people who had different concepts and different ideas. They shared with people who had different cultures. And when they shared with them, the Lord was with them and a great number of people believed and started turning to the Lord. Still, when the disciples began to connect with others that didn't have the same things in common with them or didn't fit the same kind of usual idea they had, the numbers of believers started to grow. Here it is. It wasn't about trying to convince the same kind of people. It was about reaching out and connecting with different kind of folk that wasn't like them. Even though the people might be different, the common need was still the same. The people might be different, but they all can appreciate the same message. Their context might be different, but they can appreciate the same message. As long as the message was talking about the love of God and the grace that all of us walk by, that message everybody needs and everybody can receive. In order to rebuild, you need a new beginning. Into this new beginning, here it is again, the church is going to have to regroup by rebuilding who it reaches out to. If we want to grow, we got to stop only talking to people like ourselves. If we want to grow, we got to stop talking only to the people we like or the people we understand or the people we have things in common. But we got to be willing to reach out to others who might be considered Gentiles. In this, this is Women's History Month, and no doubt we will acknowledge and celebrate the women of the church who've helped build and lift up the church, that even that the church of what it is today. Because if it wasn't for the women, <laughs> uh, where would we be? But we cannot dismiss 
that the road to being treated like an equal when it came to culture of the church was difficult one to experience for women. People like Clara Brown and Jarena Lee and Arlene Churn and Sojourner Truth, Prathia Hall and countless others who had to climb and scratch their way up to a place of respect to be heard all because men in the church kept talking to themselves and not listening to different and other people. We've been listening to the same people who tell the same story. We affirm one another and not those who need affirmation. We look to those who know church protocol and polity, but don't talk to the ones who don't own a suit or the ones who have never been to a church. We don't talk to people who, we, uh, who only see TV preachers as the model and believe that every pastor drives a Bentley and has a mega congregation. We don't talk to the person in rehab. We don't talk to the person in recovery. We don't talk to those with different kinds of upbringings or those who don't grow up in our neighborhood. We don't talk to those who love differently or love each other differently. We don't see the world as the same. And all of them love God and all of them can see Jesus in them. And all of them can learn something from walking with the Lord if we just share with them like we share with the people we already know. The disciples share with not just the Jews but with the Gentiles in Antioch. This is the place where the shift starts to happen. This is the place where the church starts to look differently. This is the place where growth takes place. This is where they begin to see that to survive, the gospel needs to be shared and the believers start to grow. Now watch this. This, uh, this goes so well they send for Barnabas. They send for Barnabas. Barnabas hears about it and he comes to Antioch and he teaches the people. Barnabas gets there and sees the evidence of God working, which means that when they reached out to others not like them, God blessed it. When by the time Barnabas gets there, he sees the evidence of what God has done in the unusual. Some of y'all are missing it. God was not looking for limits, but God is looking for new opportunities. Oh, that's a word for somebody right now. God is not looking for your limits. God is looking for you to see what possibilities can come forth. God was looking for people to invest in. And when they invested in others, the believers started to grow. But after a while, watch this. After a while, Barnabas goes to Tarsus and get Saul to come with him to Antioch. And Saul and Barnabas taught the people for a year and the people were blessed. Now, y'all know I love y'all, but sometimes y'all just don't want to shout with me because there's a shout in there, but y'all missed that thing. Barnabas brought Saul to Antioch, and for a year, they taught there together, and the people were blessed. Some of y'all still ain't getting it. I'm going too fast. Here it is. Barnabas brings Saul to Antioch. Saul is a part of the reason they fled to Antioch in the first place. Remember, we talked about Stephen being stoned at the beginning. I was going somewhere. Well, my Bible readers know that Saul was the one who held the coats for the ones who did the killing. Saul was an agent of the enemy. He was a proponent of the empire. He was prosecuting and persecuting believers and followers. And now he's helping teach them the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in case you missed it, that's called a turnaround. Barnabas must have gotten the idea that if I'm going to convince these people of what the power of Jesus can do, I got to bring Saul down here so somebody can see that what they were once afraid of is now helping them to be everything God wants them to be. That all you need to do is look at Saul and see that this power is life changing and life transforming. And don't you know that every now and then you need some evidence of what the Lord has done. You need 
needed some demonstration of what the Lord can do. Saul, who once chased after Jesus' followers, is now chasing after Jesus himself. The Lord will give you some evidence that he can turn some stuff around. And I know I'm asking a silly question right now, but does anybody have any evidence that the Lord knows how to turn some stuff around? Do you have some evidence in your life that the Lord knows how to fix some stuff that looked like it was messed up to begin with? Do you have some evidence that God has shown up in your situation and turned some stuff around and people are looking at you, worshiping the Lord and giving thanks to God when there was a time where people thought you would never do anything like that. Can anybody declare that all you need is a little bit and the Lord can turn that situation around? Sometimes you got to regroup for a new beginning. But sometimes you got to rebuild for your new beginning. Saul is the evidence. Oh, you got to give it to that Barnabas. He was slick. Uh, they were afraid of Saul. But now they say Barnabas brought Saul to Antioch and said, look what the Lord has done. Look how the Lord has done this thing. Look what the Lord has been able to do. And I declare there's some witnesses who can say, look what the Lord has done. All you can do is look back over your life and declare, look what the Lord has done. When I look back over my life and I see some places I never thought I'd make it out of, I never thought I'd go, I never thought I'd be. But here I am, Lord, worshiping you and giving you thanks and giving you praise. I should have been dead. I should have been counted out. I should have been unemployed. I should have been in a worse situation. But God, I'm so grateful for what it is you've done. Look where you brought me from. Oh, I declare, I'm trying to move on with this thing, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I declare sometimes you ain't got no choice but to just say thank you. I, I declare that when you think of the places that the Lord spared you from, when you think of the places that it looked like it was over and it was finished, but God... God stepped in and turned some situations around. I declare there's some people around you right now, even if they don't want to shout, even if they don't want to raise their hand, even if they don't want to say thank you, there's some people around you right now who can say, I got some evidence. I got some evidence that the Lord can turn this thing around. Sometimes, 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 you got to regroup for a new beginning. Sometimes, you're gonna have to rebuild for a new beginning. But here's the final piece, here it is. Sometimes with new beginnings, there are always gonna be moments where you're gonna have to make a restart. Uh, here it is, Barnabas, in this ingenious moment, comes to Antioch with some evidence of what God has done. He brings the most notorious hunter of believers to the place they have fled to and to let them know that God can turn some things around. Saul was working for the empire. Now he's working for liberation. Something changed. And I know there's some folks who can say that there's some directions that you were headed in, but something changed. There were some ideas you had and some positions that you took, but something changed. You had some things that you thought to yourself that you would never see happen, and you thought you would never see yourself doing, but something changed. God took hold of you in a different way, and something in your life changed, and now you see things differently. Uh, Saul had a restart, and his restart was a new beginning for the people in Antioch. I'll tell you what I mean. For a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. And the text says that they were called Christians first in Antioch. You missed another shout. In Antioch, 
where the people had to regroup. They reached out to people other than the people they knew who were like them, and they demonstrated a shift that was happening by having Saul teach. And they were first called Christians right there. In Africa, they're called Christians first in Antioch. Some of y'all still ain't feeling it. The original plan got busted up and the people were scattered. They didn't limit themselves to what they knew. They had to incorporate some new thinking if they wanted to survive. And they got the name Christians in Antioch, a city in Africa. You've been in the story, beloved, since the very beginning. People who look like you have been in the story since the beginning. And now, when the Christian movement gets started, it happens in a place where the outcasts come together. Those who were Jewish come into a new thing. Those who were Gentile come into a new thing. Those who follow Christ get a new name. Can I help you? Black people came to this country under duress. They had to incorporate new and different ways into their life of faith. But through it all, something else came forth different in their faith. It started as one thing, but because of what black folk had been through, it became something else. They tried to give you one thing. But because of how the spirit works and our condition and our context, it became something else. Judaism started it off, but it became something else. Western Christianity may have started this off, but the black church became something else. White folk gave you something to start off with, but because of who Jesus is, it became something else. It's a new thing. It's different. It's, it's not necessarily a better thing, but it's a different thing. It, it's something that causes us to do our own thing. When God brings what looks like a tragedy together, it's only a regroup opportunity. Don't look at it as defeat, but look at it as God creating a new beginning. And listen to this. Christian, the name Christian, started off as a derogatory term. Christian started off as an insult. It means follower of Christ, and which meant you followed somebody who was crucified, but it got turned around and used as a name of strength as we are followers of the risen Savior. Isn't that something? Something started off as a negative, but getting turned around to be used as a positive. Ain't that something? Something that starts off as a negative, that gets turned around to be used as a positive. You know, it's always, God has always been taking things that have been used to hurt and using them for a sign of strength. It's like when Joseph's brother sold him off just because he had a dream, but God used it as a moment of strength and eventually promoted him. It's like when Moses said that he was a stutterer and couldn't do God's will, but God used it as a moment of strength to give him the words to confront Pharaoh. It's like when Gideon didn't feel confident in God sending him into battle, but God used it as a moment of strength and sent him in with only 300 men to defeat the enemy. It's like when David was laughed at because he was a boy facing a giant, but God used it as a moment of strength when he defeated Goliath with a sling and a stone. It's like when Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, but God used it as a moment of strength to place him in the belly of a fish to have him do what he called him to do. It's like when Elizabeth, who thought she was too old to have children, but God used it 
prophet as a moment of strength to bring the prophet John into the world. It's like when the plantation owners were letting us use our own music, but God used it as a moment of strength, and we turned spirituals into cold language of freedom. It's like when people were afraid to let us worship by ourselves, but God used it as a moment of strength and went to the hush harbors and we worship in our own way. It's like when folks made it illegal to teach us, but God used it as a moment of strength and we taught ourselves and created Lemoyne Owen and Payne College and Wiley College and Bishop and Livingstone College. It's like when they burned our churches down to the ground, but God used it as a moment of strength and we just kept on building better churches. It's like when they denied us the right to vote and tried to terrorize us with the Klan and violence, but God used it as a moment of strength and we just kept singing, ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. It's like when the South produced Bill Connor and George Wallace and Jim Clark, but God used it as a moment of strength to produce Rosa Parks and Claudette Colvin and John Lewis. It's like when they took a poor Palestinian Jew who was born to a couple with housing issues, who was raised in the housing projects in a place called Nazareth, who hung out with the outcast and who dared to help those in society that society forgot about, who spoke of love and justice in such a radical way that he was forced to be executed by the state, who went to a kangaroo court that said he was guilty before the trial even started because of his heritage. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus went to a cross, and he took shame and embarrassment, and he put it on his back. But God used it as a moment of strength and turned it around for those who believe. So you can call me what you want. You can call me whatever you choose. But make sure at the end of it, you put on, he's a child of God. I declare living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Raising, he justified freely forever. And one day, he's coming back. Coming back again. It's a new beginning. It's a new start. You just need to regroup, rebuild, and restart. It's a new beginning. God ain't finished. God is still working. Don't think of it as defeat. God is still moving. And if I'm right, he'll fight my battles. I declare the Lord will take away. The Lord will take care of you. The Lord will show up in your new beginning. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. I know you feel like an outcast. I know you feel scattered. I know you feel out of sorts. I know you feel like your plan ain't coming together. But it ain't the time to be defeated. It's the time to regroup. Because here it is. God's already brought you the evidence. God has given you the evidence. <laughs> I know there's a few people. I, I know there's a few people. I'd see a few hands. Just If we were in worship, I'd see a few hands who declare, I, I, I know. I know I am a witness. I am the evidence. You look at, <laughs> at the evidence of what the Lord has done. So in this moment, beloved, my brothers and sisters, we extend this invitation. We extend this invitation to a new beginning. Maybe a new beginning. It looks the same, but they're doing different stuff. Three of these are brought together, but one of these
is doing its own thing. Black church has been doing its own thing. But we need to know to continue to do our own thing, to continue to be relevant, to continue to be powerful. We got to regroup. We got to rebuild. And we got to restart. Don't be so hell-bent on digging your heels in that you can't dig yourself out. So right now, beloved, maybe somebody in this place right now, my brother and my sister, this moment is for you, looking for you to share, be a part of the New Calvary family. Like we said, opportunity for you to be a part of worship, opportunity for you to be a part of this New Calvary family. We'd love to have you. I'd love to be your pastor. We'd love uh, to be a church family. We'd love to go and grow together. All you got to do is dial 757-828-6121. 757 757- 828-6121. Just let the person on the other end of the phone know you want to be a part of New Calvary Baptist Church ministry. We believe that we are a progressive church focused on liberation and justice. Innovative in the way in which we interpret God's word for our lives in this modern day. And if that's you, come on and share with the New Calvary Baptist Church family. Wherever you are, wherever you are, we are virtual and we would love to worship and share with you. For we believe God is doing something wonderful in this place. It's your time for a new beginning. And if that's you, if that's you in this place, just raise your hand and just say to yourself, God, I need you now. God, I need you now. I need you to touch. I need you to work. I need you to speak to my heart, speak to my condition. Whatever it is, God, I'm letting you know I can't do it without you. So God, as I open my heart to you, I'm asking that you enter in. Lead me, guide me, and direct me in the places you would have me to go. And in all things, the believers give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you and we love you for all that you're doing. And it is in the wonderful name of Jesus, the people of God say amen. We celebrate you in this moment. We're grateful for you and what God is doing and the transformation and the new beginning that is happening in your life. We're asking you to prepare your elements at this time as we get ourselves ready to prepare at the communion table as we share together in the month of March. elements that you share in this moment, whatever that you have available, we understand that they symbolize uh, the supper that was held and that was given to us uh, and the night that Jesus was betrayed he took bread and he broke it he gave it to his disciples and he said take and eat of this For this represents my body, which is broken for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup after the supper, and he said, take and drink of it. But this represents my blood, which will be shed for you. That apostle evangelist Paul says that as often as we eat this bread, and as often as we drink of this cup, we show the Lord's death till he comes. And so we, in this moment, take this as sacred space. This is, as Dr. Gregory Howard said last week, this is a Sankofa moment, a moment when we remember and we reflect and we go back to remember what has been done for us. So all those who have been served and who are ready and prepared, to receive this symbol of our Lord's broken body and let us eat and share together. And in the same manner as we have received this cup, this symbol of our Lord's shed blood as it is a remission for our sin, as it is the symbol that represents the key to eternal life and the sacrifice that was made 
so that we might live. We drink. Bible said that when they finished the supper, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. So as you go departing, put a, a hymn in your heart and celebrate and share uh, in this moment together. And we uh, look forward to sharing with you again tomorrow. We will be sharing uh, in our prayer line at 8 a.m. So please be open and mindful to that. Also, we look to share. Wednesday in our Bible study as we continue our journey with David and 1 Samuel as we talk about what it is to be restored. May God bless you and continue to keep you. Uh, tell somebody you love them today and that they matter. Until the next time, we see you. Sawabona, we see you. Peace. Be well.